Hello, this is Kathy Benninger, Nurse Practitioner with Ohio Health Pulmonary Rehabilitation. In this presentation, we'll be talking about COPD. Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease, or COPD, is a general term. Many people use this term instead of the specific disease types, such as emphysema, or chronic bronchitis, or COPD asthma, or obstructive asthma. While each of these specific conditions affect the lungs a little bit differently, the symptoms and treatment are similar. Emphysema occurs when the walls of the air sacs are destroyed. This causes loss of elasticity and air trapping. When air gets trapped, oxygen and carbon dioxide cannot move in and out of the bloodstream normally. The damage is permanent. On the lower left, you see emphysematous changes in the upper section of lung. This is the most common area for emphysema to occur. To the right is a CT scan. The yellow arrow points to a small area of normal tissue, whereas the red arrow points to damaged air sacs and air trapping. Chronic bronchitis is caused by inflammation, swelling, and mucus buildup in the breathing tubes. This slows air flow in and out of the lungs. COPD asthma overlap is a term used when a person has both asthma and emphysema. It is more common in asthmatics who smoke. The number one cause of COPD is smoking. This includes all forms of smoking, both active and secondhand. Occupations have also been linked to COPD, including coal miners, carpenters, particularly those that deal with drywall dust, and sometimes firefighters. Also fumes and burning fuels, particularly when they're used in poorly ventilated buildings. Asthma increases your risk, and genetics. Alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency is a specific type of genetic defect that leads to early COPD. There are a number of symptoms associated with COPD. The most common is shortness of breath, sometimes wheezing or chest tightness, cough, which tends to be chronic almost daily, maybe frequent respiratory infections or fatigue, and in later stages, you may notice weight loss. Pulmonary function testing is used to diagnose and determine the severity of COPD. It is accomplished through blowing forcefully through a hose. While you're in the PFT lab, you may be asked to do a six minute walk to determine if oxygen is also needed. So what is the treatment for COPD? The most important step is to stop smoking and try to protect your lungs from other people's smoke. Exercising regularly, preventing infections, and taking medications as prescribed. There are several medications used for treatment of COPD. The most common are the bronchodilators. There are two main types of bronchodilators. The first is beta-2 agonist. The beta-2 agonist, when inhaled into the lungs, attach to receptor sites. These receptors take the medicine deep into the muscle lining and cause relaxation of the breathing muscles and allow the air tubes to relax and open. They can be delivered through powders, sprays, or liquids for the nebulizer. They come in short and long acting. The short acting lasts about four hours and is the most common. Some people refer to short acting beta-2 agonists as emergency or quick relievers or rescue inhalers. 
Common rescue inhalers are ProAir, Provental, Ventolin, or Zopinex. Albuterol liquid can be used in a nebulizer. These can also be used as prevention prior to exercise. Long-acting beta agonists, or LABA, LABA, last 12 to 24 hours. It must be taken daily to control symptoms. Some examples of this medicine are Cerevent or Stiverti. Common side effects for either the short or long-acting formulation is nervousness, tremor, difficulty sleeping, palpitations, fast heartbeats, and they can also lower potassium if used in high amounts. Another common bronchodilator are the muscarinic antagonists. They attach to a different receptor in the airways. And again, the medicine is taking through the receptor to the muscle layer and causes relaxation of the breathing tubes so the air can flow more normally. These two come in both powder, spray, or liquid forms. They also have a short-acting and long-acting formula. The short-acting lasts about six hours and are used as needed. Examples include Atrovent or Ipatropium. Long-acting formulas, also known as LAMA, last 12 to 24 hours in the body and must be taken regularly to control symptoms. Examples include Incruz, Spireva, Tadorza. Common side effects include dry mouth, urinary retention, especially in men with enlarged prostates, acid reflux, and in some situations, they can worsen narrow angle glaucoma. These medicines can be combined for even stronger effect. They can be delivered through powders, spray, or liquids for the nebulizer. And again, they come in short and long acting versions. The short acting version lasts about six hours and used as needed. Examples include Combivent or Duoneb for the nebulizer machine. Long acting lasts 12 to 24 hours and must be taken regularly to control symptoms. Examples include Anoro, Bethesby, Stialto, and Uteron. Beta-2 and muscarinic agents can also be combined with the steroid. The steroid may be needed to control inflammation in the breathing tubes for people who have frequent exacerbations. They are given as sprays, powders, or liquid form in the nebulizer. These come only in long acting versions at 12 to 24 hours and must be used daily to control symptoms. Since it contains a steroid, you must rinse your mouth with water and spit into the sink after use. Examples include Trilogy, which contain all three medicines. Examples of just a beta-2 agonist and a steroid include Advair, Brio, Dulera, or Simacort. There are surgical treatments for COPD, lung volume reduction surgery, or LVRS. The upper portion of lungs are removed from the body, and the lower section can expand and fill the space. Pulmonary valves can be placed this diverts air away from the most diseased portion of the lungs and sends it to uh, the healthier portion of lung or a lung transplant where your lungs are removed and replaced with a donor's lungs. There is very specific criteria for each of these procedures based on PFTs, age, weight, the severity of your emphysema and location. And of course, you must be a non-smoker for more than four months to be considered.